8.09 a.m. I certainly hope that you guys have had a fantastic weekend so far, and I certainly hope that um, it was productive. I hope that you guys did not just sit around and do nothing all day. I like to remind you guys the importance of um, doing stuff, doing stuff, guys. There's so many things. There's so many things to be doing, relationships to be making, businesses to be building, hobbies to be doing. Don't just sit around and waste your life away. Please get out and do something. So I hope everyone is um, waking up soon. I know Sunday is the day to sleep in for some y'alls. But anyways, I figured I'd put this up here not only for those of you that are awake, but for those of you that will be waking up soon. So when you flip open your Facebook, I'm the first face you see. On uh, teaching you how to be great in 2019, I figured it would be a great time to talk about networking. I know from the direct messages I've been getting that so many of you are looking for a change. You guys are looking to change your physical, change your job, change your relationship. Big, big things are happening in your lives and I want to help you. And one of the best ways to make change in your life is to make changes in the people you hang out with and that is your network. The people in your hot, the people in your warm, and the people in your cold being pulled into your warm markets. You want to make sure that you are constantly networking and constantly building people around you who support you and your uh, passion, your hustle, your business, whatever it is. So. A few pointers on how to do that jazz is coming up. I am going to be filming, um, not filming, I'm sorry. I'm going to be recording my audio on SoundCloud, so I'm not going to be interacting too much, so bear with me. Uh, for those of you that are new here, um, you can find me under sabrinavictoria.com. All of my social media is there. So if you're looking to follow me on a certain platform, that would be the place to go. And um, I'm on SoundCloud. So I have a podcast running on SoundCloud. This is my 80th podcast. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Um, I promised myself 100 podcasts by the end of the year. So I, um, I'm well on my way. I'm, cr I'm down to the crunch time, but we're gonna do this. So, um, anyways, today we're talking about networking. So stay with me. Here we go. She has no business giving advice because all the so-called social norms are against her. But she's here in your world to give her slightly biased, in-your-face opinion on how she thinks you could human better. Follow now to catch all her inspirational words on life, business, love, and learning to empower yourself. And now, your host, Sabrina Victoria. Thank you so much for joining me here. It is Sunday, 8.13 a.m. I certainly hope that your weekend has been productive. And I certainly hope that you haven't been laying around all weekend doing nothing. Uh, make sure that you're spending quality time with the people you love. Make sure you're spending quality time with your children. Make sure that you are embracing your physical activity getting out, getting active, whatever it is, whatever part of your life that is missing, that you feel a hole in. The weekends are the time to be embracing those things and um, and start working on it, right? If you're busy, 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 busy all week, then you should be spending quality time with your children and your family. That doesn't mean sitting in front of the TV, zoning out. That means actual quality time speaking and communicating with them and hugging on them and kissing on them. Um, if you are constantly involved with your family all week, mothers, 
Uh, weekends might be a good time to embrace your passions, your side hustle, your side business, work out, go take a yoga class, a kickboxing class, a uh, go to a spa. Whatever it is that you need in your life, the weekends are the time to make sure that you are making up and making sure that you have a quality life that is bringing you joy and a happiness. So today I wanted to talk about networking. So many of you are direct messaging me, letting me know that um, you have big things coming up. Big things coming up. 2019 is your year. Um, new jobs, um, new business adventures. And just wanting to expand your sales force. So many big things are being talked about. So I thought, what better time than now, before 2019, to talk about networking and to talk about the importance of networking, right? Um, even if you're semi kind of good, maybe in your job, networking can very easily get you to the point uh, where you're entering into a new job just by uh, meeting and connecting with the correct people. So I've been in the sales industry since I was 18 years old, so a very long time. Um, I jumped into it right out of high school, and I have slowly over the last few years been molding myself to be uh, an awesome communicator, to be uh, quick-witted, and, um, and, you know, being able to converse and build rapport with the people around me because that is the way, number one, to grab sales, number two, uh, build a team of people around you, and uh, number three, I've never had to look for a job. Uh, every single one of my jobs, minus one, was a referral where I was brought in uh, because of my work ethic, because of my attitude, because of my um, my vigor and my um, social skills. So that is one of the also one of the most amazing things. And one of the things that I would like to tell you guys is this did not come naturally. I was not an outgoing person. I was not spunky like this at all my entire life until I probably hit maybe junior senior year I got into my first marketing company on straight commission and I had to in order to survive I had to come out of my shell I was super shy super timid I had no self-esteem I thought I was so ugly I did not talk or speak to people at all. I was I was like afraid of my own shadow. And what happened is I um I got a position in a marketing company at a mall. I don't know if you guys know or have are familiar with the people that like walk around the mall trying to give you surveys. Uh I was one of those people. So I was thrown out <laughs> into the public with a little clipboard and I had to go up to total strangers, offer them a, like nothing, basically $2, $3, $4 to take a short survey with me. And it was marketing for things in everyday life, for kitchen utensils, for um, different snacks, for cookies and, and chicken wings and magazines and um, different, different beauty products where you know I had certain ones and they had to pick and choose which one they liked better, which style they liked better, which flavor they liked better. And I had to sit there and take, um, take a, uh, a survey with them and sit down with them and ask them questions and get them to laugh and get them to have fun. And that kind of molded me into what I am now. Obviously after that, you know, I became more outgoing and more independent. I got referred into another job and then so on and so forth, so on and so forth. And it has, um, you know, the more that I'm in this industry, the more that I realize how important it is to be really good at networking and really good at building rapport. For those of you, you know, who are looking in this industry, I just did a podcast on rapport. It's probably another good one to look into if you're in the sales industry at all. For those of you that are you know, network marketers where you're maybe stay-at-home moms or stay-at-home dads 
who are doing you know some sort of network marketing from their home this is a great thing to be listening to so the first thing you want to do um, which I have become a expert at is meeting people through other people so one of the things that I have successfully done in the business that I am in now is we are a sales force and we recruit through our sales force. So we are constantly, constantly telling the individuals that work for us to look for other people. Because this is the thing that you have to remember. Usually the people that um, you're looking for, right? Like if you have a, a core group of people, you're like, I wish I could double these people. Usually, people of a feather flock of the same feather flock together. So, if you have a really tight group of like energetic, motivated, um, happy individuals, usually those type of people know similar people. Just like if you meet a gamer, usually gamers know other gamers. If you know somebody who likes to eat a lot, usually those people hang out with other people who like to eat a lot. If you know somebody who's a cyclist or somebody who's into yoga or somebody who's a vegan, those people know other people who are also yogis or vegans, right? So if you have a source, if you have a core group of people who are really good at sales, really good at talking to people, really motivated, usually those individuals are hanging around or know of other individuals who are the same. So ask them. Obviously, um, incentivize incentivize them by um, uh, letting them know that there's obviously a cash value to that. When they bring somebody to you, then you will provide them some sort of a um, a bonus towards you know giving you access to that person. A great great way to build a company constantly. One of the things that our company has become really, really good at doing is um, not pushing sales as or pushing, um, I guess, recruiting just as much as we're pushing sales. So you want to make sure that the individuals that are on your team are also not only selling, like sell a lot, sell a lot, but also constantly being reminded to recruit and to bring people in. And um, you'll find that keeping it on their forefront, right, in the forefront of their mind will keep them looking. Recruiting from from anywhere and everywhere. You can recruit at... Um, uh, Fast food chains, I don't know why I just blanked there. Fast food chains, McDonald's, Taco Bell, Burger King, Wendy's, Best Buy is a great place to recruit at. Your local grocery store, the waitress that's helping you out that's super spunky and awesome. Leave your card, always have business cards with you. I try really hard to always make sure that I'm on the lookout for individuals who are... Um, just like people who I want to work with. If you meet somebody at Office Depot, Office Depot is a huge one. I've recruited probably a dozen people from Office Depot just because they were helping me in the aisle find envelopes, struck up a conversation with them because I'm really good at building rapport and wound up being like, hey, listen, why don't you come in for an interview? My job is hiring right now. See if it's a good fit for you. And they come in for an interview and half the time, they start, right? So it's not a 100%, but you know, uh, the more people, it's just like sales, the more people that you're bringing on, the, the higher your numbers are as far as recruiting, the larger your network will, will get um, when it comes to sales. So, and this is the same thing also with, um, if you're trying to get a new job or trying to build a business, Always be networking through people that you already know, people who are who are in similar industries, people who um, maybe own a business, right? Uh, get with them and see if there's anything that they can help you with. Uh, social media is a huge one. Now, I've had a hard time with this one because I've moved so much. So my main base of... Um, 
social media is predominantly in Chicago. Probably about 75% of the people on my social media platforms are from Chicago because that's where I was born and that's where I was raised. Um, and then from there, probably around age like 23, I moved to Ohio for two years, maybe connected with like 12 people who jumped on my on my social media. Then I moved to Pennsylvania, which I worked a lot harder on Pennsylvania, but even with that, maybe I got 30 or 40 uh, recipients from Pennsylvania. And from there, I've been down here in Florida. And same thing, it's taken me a little bit of time to really build up my network on social media. But for those of you who are living in an area and you've been in your area for a very, very long time, Feel free to use your social media to um, to help you out. If you're looking for another job, if you're looking for assistance in uh, building a business, reach out to people via direct message. Uh, even put a post up that's maybe not so forward. You don't want to be like, you know, some of these people are very, very aggressive. I don't know about you guys, but I'm constantly receiving direct messages on um, Instagram, especially I get direct message constantly on, you know, joining a new network, joining a new, you know, uh, how to lose weight type coaching all the time. Makeup people are constantly contacting me. So the first thing you want to do if you're in a business like that is you kind of want to, your directness or the way that you're messaging people, don't use the template necessarily that the industry is telling you to use because so many people are sending it our way. Change it up a little bit, add a little bit of your personality to it, and um, kind of go from there. One of the things that I've realized that I appreciate is people who just talk, right? People who just converse, who have a conversation with you. And don't necessarily bring up what they do. Because what happens is if you just strike up a conversation with somebody like, hey, I really like that post today, you know, uh, very inspirational, we need more people like you. The probability of me responding to that is like 100 times more than if you shoot me uh, a cut and paste of a sales, you know, blurb. Of come check out my page and buy my health products. Just striking up some sort of conversation with me about my stuff will literally is a hundred percent more um, guaranteed that I'll respond. Number one, number two, I will probably also click on your picture and go through your feed to see what you're doing. Now, if I was a person that was interested in losing weight or interested in joining a uh, industry like that. If your page is filled with what you're selling or what you're doing or your weight loss product or your cleaning product or your makeup product, I will filter through your pictures and possibly contact you that way a lot more than the other way. So, you know, I'm not necessarily saying don't do one or the other, but just be conscious of the fact that the, doing uh, one of everything every single time is probably not going to get you really good results. So building rapport is actually the best way to kind of convert total strangers into customers, if that makes any sense. So the other thing you want to do is don't ask for a job. So if you are out in the market right now and you're looking to make huge changes in 2019, a lot of times just networking is your best bet, which is why it's so important to make sure that you know how to communicate and you know how to build rapport. And like I said, I've talked about this in previous um, podcasts and I'll do my best to remember to link it um, in the description below. But don't ask for a job necessarily. If you know someone in an industry, um, ask them about it. Just ask and, and inquire. If it's an industry that you're possibly interested in, just ask them questions about it and then maybe kind of sort of let them know that you're also interested in getting into um, that same exact genre or um, or position or you know whatever it is. Don't necessarily come right out and say, hey, I'm looking for a job. Uh, what will happen automatically is as you're talking about it and showing interest in it, the person will more than likely say, hey, you know, maybe they're hiring. Maybe, you know, I can see if I can get you in or something like that. That 
sounds less desperate than just going around asking every single person you know if there's a job available that you can work at. So maybe a little more of a roundabout, a little more of a warm, cozy feeling will help them feel more comfortable referring you into their um their company, if that makes any sense. The other thing you want to do is instead of just handing your resume to everybody, and I've actually had this happen to me before where, you know, somebody is looking for a job, they'll actually say like, here's my resume. If you know of anybody who's hiring, hand my resume to them. And to me, that just seems so awkward and, and kind of puts me off a little bit. What I recommend you to do instead is if you do have a resume and you are in the market for looking for, for looking for a job, Give your resume to people with the um, adv not advice, with the uh, intention of asking for help, right? So here's my resume. Can you look it over for me and let me know if there's anything I should add or anything I should take off because this is the industry that I'm trying to get into. So if you're trying to get into, you know, computer online marketing of some sort, right? Let them know what you're looking to get into and just say, hey, I would just really appreciate your advice on, you know, how I set up my resume. Now, once they see it, they read it, they see your background, they see your history, they know you as a person, you build rapport. And then what happens is at that time, you're able to go, um, Go to that person for advice on how to set up your resume, but then at the same time, that person is reading through your stuff and actually possibly thinking in their head of a company or a job within their company or somebody else that they know that might be a good job um a good place for you to apply, right? And it's not so abrasive, it's not so straightforward or jumping all over but everybody asking everyone to help you out as far as your financial career. Does that make sense? So just kind of asking for advice on how to set up your resume, what to put on, what to take off, what to explain a little bit more will give them the, the um, information that they need to be able to possibly network for you. And if you're speaking to somebody like me, for instance, who knows a lot of people and who's constantly talking to a lot of people, coming to someone who has sort of my personality is probably the best person to confront because the, that person is constantly talking and my wheels are constantly turning on how to help people, um, how to grow my network, right? So if, I, if you are somebody coming to me with, hey, can you help me out with your resume? And I know somebody who needs somebody in the online marketing industry, right? And I can refer that person to you, your resume looks good. Then what happens, which I would appreciate, is now the new person that I've just referred you to now likes me even more because I just help them fill a position for them, right? So when you're doing stuff like this, look for people who are kind of in that business mindset, kind of constantly looking to improve and build upon uh, because in that way, you're actually helping them help you, right? So if I help you, I'm actually also helping myself. Best type of people to have in your network, number one, and best type of people to be networking with constantly. So keep that in mind. The other thing is don't take up too much time. And this I can say from personal experience, the worst thing that you can do when you're talking to somebody who is in that business mindset who's networking constantly, who's building constantly, is you don't want to waste their time. So when you get in front of somebody who is the prime candidate for helping you out, you want to make sure that you're not talking too much or wasting too much of their time. Have an agenda before you come up, go up to that person, right? So you already have a person in mind, you have your resume, you're gonna approach them, keep the resume in your car, have the conversation, oh, by the way, I have it in my car, can you help me out? nonchalantly, right? But get right to the point. Get right to the point of what the agenda is. Don't be beating around the bush so much. Um, get right to the point on, um, you know, what you're, um, you're looking for as far as the job without asking them though, 
right? Tell them what genre you're looking for. Tell them you have the resume. You would like their help if they're interested. Hand them their resume and ask them for their advice. That's the best way to do it without taking up too much of their time because that will frustrate them. Um, the other thing you want to do is you want to let the other person talk, right? So people who are good at networking love to talk. They love to talk. So the best thing to do and one of the hardest things to do, especially for people in my industry who know what you're doing, is to get us to talk. But we do appreciate it. Everybody loves to talk and loves to tell their story. So if you are strong enough, to get someone like me who knows that there's possibly a side agenda going on to actually speak their story. Anybody who who you ever allow to, to speak will automatically like you. I don't know if you've ever been in a, in a situation like that before where somebody actually listened to your entire story. Um, you tend to like that person more when they allow you to speak. And the reason that is, it's because most people in their lives are constantly being cut off. Most of the people um, who are in relationships and business relationships, uh, co-workers, they're used to constantly, they tell a little bit of the story and they're cut off. So if you can be a good listener, the person that you're looking to help you with your networking will like you and appreciate you so much more and will be more bound to actually um, help you out. Now, some of the things that you want to be asking this person, right? So if you were looking to get into the sales industry and, you know, looking to get hired by me, for instance, but you didn't want to come right out and say, Hey, hire me. Some of the good questions that you would want to ask that person is ask them about themselves, ask them about the company, ask them how long they've been in the industry. Um, ask them what type of training they would need in order to get into the sales industry. What kind? What is the culture of the company? So allowing that person to be able to express and talk about their story with the company, their um, uh, how many years they've done it, how they like the company, will then get their brain thinking about you in correlation to their company or to a company similar to what you're looking for, if that makes any sense. So keep all of that in mind. And again, a lot of it is based on communication. A lot of it is based on how well you um, are able to speak, build rapport, and allow other people to speak also. Um, a success story is also amazing. So obviously, if you come up to someone like me in the sales industry and you tell me a wonderful story about a sales um, endeavor that you were on where you almost lost the sale, it almost was a, was a, um, a bust, it almost didn't work out, but then at the end, you did some super awesome sales tactics and you were able to ring the person in and sell them and it was all wonderful and they feel wonderful and you feel wonderful. And if you can kind of share a story like that, that also is a really, really good way of keeping people engaged with what you do, your abilities to do it, right? So if you're even just talking to anybody, right? Anybody and you're sharing that story, they then will start thinking right away of the people that they know in their circle that are also in the sales industry. And what will happen is when they bump into that person or see that person, they're going to be more likely to say, Hey, I know this person. I know a Sarah or I know a Matthew who, um, you know, told me this ridiculously amazing story about how they did this sales thing. You may want to reach out to them. I don't know if they're looking for a job or not, um, or, or what they're, um, timeline looks like, but you might want to, you know, if you, if I give you their phone number, can you reach out to them? Whatever it is, it'll be on the forefront of their mind. So telling stories about your success is another great way to network in a very nonchalant, uh, covert way. Okay. The other thing you want to do is ask for suggestions. People love giving advice. They do. Everyone does, including myself. People love to give advice. So if you can be open to people's advice, right, quiet and listen and ask people for their advice and then listen to what they say, you will, number one, make them feel good because they feel like, oh, mm -mm -mm, I know everything. Number two, you'll gain knowledge. So when you're talking to somebody who's a uh, professional in their field, I'm 
pretty much any level, um, they will be able to help you or give you actual advice on how to get into the industry, what's the language, what's the vocabulary, who to talk to, um, advice on the, on the resume. People love doing that. So keep that in mind. Also, one of the things that I have always, always been good at and a way that I'm really good at building rapport is I'm really good at asking questions. I'm really, really good at inquiring and keeping the conversation going by asking real questions that allow the person to feel needed, to feel necessary, to feel important, and people love that. I'm telling you, if you don't believe me, again, try it out. I always say with all of this stuff, try it out. None of the things that I am telling you will ever, ever hurt you. If anything, they will help you. So the other thing you want to do is find a reason to follow up, right? So you have a conversation with me, for instance, you get my phone number, um, you do all these things, you ask for advice on the resume, you ask for advice on, you know, what to do in the industry, what you need for the industry. Um, find a reason to follow up, right? Set up a second meeting, set up a phone call where you're like, hey, listen, um, I gave you my resume. Can I call you in a week? Can I call you like next Tuesday and see what kind of advice you have on my resume? Would that also work for you, right? Set up a second time to speak. Another great way to make sure that not only you're building your network, but you're continuing to follow up with your network. And what you want to do is put these people in your phone. One of the things that I will do, if you look at my contacts in my phone, probably 50% of them have in the notes detailed description on who they are, what they look like, possibly what they were wearing, if they have kids, if they're married, names of kids, anything important that I found out. I will put in the notes of these contacts. This helps number one with keywords, right? So maybe it happened like three months ago and I totally don't remember, but I remember the guy was wearing a purple shirt. I can literally put in my search bar purple and anytime I wrote purple down, purple shirt will pop up and that individual's name will pop up and I'm like, this was the guy, his name was Billy, right? So any sort of descriptions, type it in, and uh, this will allow you to be able to reconnect with people months later. Now, the cool thing about this is number one, there's calling and number two, there's text messaging. So even just having a text conversation um, in order to re uh, connect with individuals, because again, time, right? Time is of an essence. So if for some reason they don't answer, maybe I always recommend calling. Calling is the best, but when you do call, make it short. You might even want to start with, hey, listen, I don't have a lot of time. I'm running in between meetings here, but I was just thinking of you um, with anything, right? If they told you their birthday, if they told you their kid was getting married, if they told you, always keep this stuff in mind and being able to call up, you know, if they told you, oh, hey, listen, I, my favorite food restaurant is like Jack's Ribs on 4th Street and you happen to go to Jack's Ribs on 4th Street the night before, call the person and say, hey, listen, it was craziest thing. I was in that area. I saw this place that I remembered you told me about. I went. It was fantastic. Call them and tell them, hey, I don't have a lot of time. I just want to let you know. I ran into that one restaurant that you told me about. It just happened to pass it. I did a Yui, went in. It was phenomenal. Thank you so much for the recommendation. I appreciate it. How's life? Good, good you know, still looking to do this and this and this and this, you know, anybody. Okay. Bye. Literally will again, just keep you on the forefront of their brain. And that is the key to networking. It's constantly reminding people, constantly reminding people what you do, what you're looking for. Uh, if you are a photographer, if you are, um, a babysitter, a pet sitter, Whatever it is that you're doing, you want us to constantly be in the forefront of people's minds so that when something like that happens, when they need a photographer, when they need a dog sitter, when their, you know, mom's, you know, friend goes into the hospital and all of a sudden needs personal home care and you have a personal home care company, you want to make sure you're on the forefront of these people's minds so they can say, oh yeah, I forgot. Or I remember Sarah. 
And even though you hadn't spoken to her four months and you probably would have gone with somebody else, but she just called you to tell you about the ribs. Now Sarah's on your forefront. You'll call Sarah. You say, hey, my mom's friend just got in the house. She's probably going to need to go into, um, you know, assistant living. How much is your guys' company? You know, how much is it to actually get, you know, home health care? Um, and a network is started like that. It's as simple as that, but it's keeping it. You have to keep it going. You have to keep it warm and boiling all the time or else it gets cold. So that's what you kind of have to remember. Keep it active, energized, and boiling at all times when it comes to your network. Always remember to say thank you. This is a huge, huge one. Text messages, again, are huge. A call is huge. When somebody helps you out, make sure that you are calling them and telling them that you appreciate their help. It goes so much further, even though you thank them in the moment, right? You thank them in the moment. Thank you so much for helping me. I appreciate your help, blah, blah, blah. Afterwards, uh, a few hours later, the next day, make sure you're calling these individuals or texting these individuals and just reaching out again. Hey, just wanted to say again, thank you so much. Personalized handwritten cards is another huge one. And one of the things that the company I work for does is we write handwritten cards to our customers to let them know that we appreciate their business and welcome to the family. Same exact thing. So baby showers, always write thank you cards. Somebody helps you out with your car, write a thank you card. Or um, call them up and thank them. If a last minute babysitter, the 18 year old down the street helped you out, you know, pay her, let her leave. But the next day, call her. Say, hey, listen, I really appreciate you doing that last minute. You really saved me. What's the likelihood of that person, right, Kelly down the street has plans on Saturday um, with her boyfriend. You call her up last minute again for a babysitting job. The likelihood of her canceling the plans with her boyfriend to help you out is higher if she knows how much you appreciated it because you called her the next day to really, really express your gratitude. Keep that in mind. People love to know that they were appreciated and people love to know that you went out of your way to rethink them again. So the other thing is your online presence. Again, social media is huge. Social media is different than online presence. So keep that in mind. Okay, social media is Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. Uh, Instagram, Google Plus, online presence is a website. Is the Google um, location finder, are you able to be found? So if you are a handyman and you make your living off of just odd jobs here and there, do you have an online presence? Is there a website of some sort that you can put on your business cards? This is huge and this is so inexpensive. You can go you can get a um, Wix or WordPress um, platform for your website, super cheap, like $19 uh, to, to get the templates or whatever it is. And it's probably like five, nine, twelve dollars a month to keep your website up and running. And you know, if you pay for a year in advance, it's that cheap. If it's monthly, it's probably more like $19.99. But they give you options like pay for a full year or pay for three years or whatever it is. And they drop the price by a percentage by, you know, paying a full amount. But this is a great way. And hire. There's college students all over the place that you can easily hire to put together a small little online presence where it's CEO, right? You want to make sure that people with, that are typing in your stuff are um, able to see your uh, online website come up, put it on your business cards, plaster it on the side of your vehicle, and hand your business cards out to people. Leave them at the post office. Leave them um, at the um, breakfast place. You had breakfast with your kids with the tip. Leave your business card. What the heck? You know, who knows? The, the 
the kid who's doing your breakfast, the 20 year old who's going to high school, maybe their dad, you know, needs help re-roofing and they get your business card, you're a roofer, you're a handyman of some sort. The likelihood of him giving that business, I can't tell you how many times I've given business cards to other people because it reminded me, oh, you know, this person's looking for a cleaning lady. This person's looking for a dog walker. And I'll see one. I just saw one the other day um, for a tutor at the post office. And one of my friends was just talking about how she needed help with her kid uh, tutoring in math. So I thought this is great. So I took a picture of the business card and forwarded it to her. Now, whether or not that person called her or not, I have no idea. But that's the type of stuff that gets your network bigger. So always, always keep that in mind. So listen, guys, I certainly hope that this helped. I certainly hope that you got a few pointers from this. Remember, 2019 is right around the corner. I know that so many of you have huge, huge changes that you are looking to make coming up this year and having a nice, big, warm market around you supporting you is the best way to get what you want out of life. So listen, thanks so much for joining me here at my podcast, Human Better. Be sure to follow me here on SoundCloud. And then I'm also under sabrinavictoria.com. Always healthy, passion-filled content here. I am here to support you in your dreams. Reach out to me anytime. I am always here to guide you to your passion. Much love. Thanks for listening. For more awesome spoonfuls of things only Sabrina can get away with saying, visit SabrinaVictoria.com. And this is a reminder to follow Sabrina Victoria on Facebook for posts straight to your wall as soon as they happen.